having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything to conform to the purpose of his will for your life boy that's what I call confidence God has a plan for your life he also works out everything to conform to that purpose that he has for your life he works out everything how many things now I know we touched on this last time but it's important to remember this now why does God make sure that everything works out to fulfill the purpose he gave you because his reputation is on the line even when you mess up and make a mistake God will turn your mistake into a miracle and put you back in the race that's why if you ever fail in this church keep coming to church if you mess up don't leave stay in the prayer why God loves what you are involved with and he will redeem it he will restore you back to your purpose in life he'll make it come back some of the greatest people in the history of life have a bad history but God redeemed their history the first five books of the Bible written by a murderer so whenever you feel a little bad about what you've done if you ain't kill nobody you qualify to write the Bible that's encouragement for me can I hear an amen your failure does not cancel your assignment your problems are not more powerful than your purpose what you were born to do is more powerful than what you have done hallelujah I have failed in so many ways in my life but God is, a, is an expert in failure he knows what to do with it <laughs> he turns it into a testimony can I hear an amen? amen James Robertson who you see on television all the time I want to remind you who he is James Robertson was a rape baby his mother was raped and when she conceived this child from the rape she was encouraged by her family to have an abortion that child was James Robertson on TV you see every day on life on TBN and INSP that man is a product of rape can God redeem anything I mean you was born good and you ain't got nothing he was born raped and he got everything God takes our mess and turns it into a miracle don't you ever allow your shame to rob you of your fame Amen. hey boys they come back to God say it again come back to God see the key to the whole thing is you got to come back to God because if you come back to God he will redeem you forgive you and fix you up and turn you into a wonderful miracle you are a blessing to the, your generation and everybody got a story to tell amen some of our stories are secret stories but they are stories all the same and God will use us to be a blessing all right I want you to write down what I listed here here are the sources of confidence I wanted to talk about this uh, I call it the permanence of your purpose in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 these words you know well but I want to remind you of them it says And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. Watch this. For those he foreknew, everybody say he knew before. Those he foreknew, he also predestined, everybody say predestined, to be conformed to the likeness of his son, everybody say likeness, that he might be the firstborn, everybody say firstborn, among many of his brothers first of all this verse classes you with Jesus it says that you are his brother <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we don't like this verse too much. There are a number of places where this actually occurs. The book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about you and Jesus being brothers. I think the implication is you are family, not slaves. We are all sons of God as Jesus is son of God. And it says that you're supposed to be just like him. And God predestined you to conform to his likeness. Now, the word likeness here is translated in other places in the Bible as God-likeness. We pronounce it godliness. In other words, you were created to live and be just like God-likeness. Ooh, makes me shudder. All I want to be is a sinner saved by grace. He said, no, I want you to be just like God. Now, could you imagine God going to the zoo? That's the nightclub here that people go to, 2 o'clock in the morning. Imagine God, you know, would God go to a zoo and do the bump, bump all night? See, it's not a matter of whether you want to go to the show or not, or whether you want to go to the club. The question is, is God like that? That's the question. See, living holy is not a matter of not doing this and not doing that. Living holy is a matter of, is that worthy of me doing? You see pigs in a pen, and you decide to go wallow with them. What do you think people think of you? Matter of fact, what do you think of yourself if you do that? You get down in the pig in the mud, and the pig, and both of you all wallowing around in the ground and the mud. I mean, we, we began to wonder about you, and you hope you wonder about yourself too. In other words, there are certain things you would not do. Why? You say, that's below me. Well, sinning is below God. We shouldn't be watching one another to whether check whether we're sinning or not. That's religion. Kingdom living is there are certain things kings don't do. Say amen a little louder for me. There are certain things that royalty don't get involved with. If you are like God, God likeness, then he says he had always predestined you to be like that. Guess what? That means your destination is to be just like God. That's what that verse means. And that's why it says he works out everything to make sure that happens. No matter what you do, his goal is when he's finished, you're supposed to look just like his son Jesus. That's his goal. How do you walk into this confidence? Number one, write this down. First, you got to have a knowledge of your purpose. Number one, you must know your purpose. You must know and discover what your gifting is. What is your gift? What is the thing that you love to do naturally? What is that thing that's on the inside? It's your gift. Uh, excuse me. Uh, and is that your business on West Bay Street, the dance place? I passed there the other day. And I just held my hand up and prayed over that, you know, when I was driving past that. She has a beautiful dance studio on West Bay Street here in Nassau, Bahamas. Now, she's a very trained technical person. She has degrees in, tech, in, in some technology. But her passion is not technology. And I, and I smile sometimes. I look, if you're a good example of somebody who has training but then has a passion, and probably have more joy in your passion than you do in your technology. She is in engineering, but her real passion is this gift. And that is what you got to discover. Because in that is your confidence. Number two, to have confidence, you must have knowledge of your potential. And this is important. Whatever you were born to do, you were built with. Your ability is determined by your responsibility. Whatever God gave you birth to do, he has invested in you. Therefore, your capability is equal to your assignment. Whatever God gave you birth to do, you carry it with you, and the ability to do it is in you. Now, that's important to have confidence. 
If you know that God's instruction is equal to his injection, then the instruction shouldn't frighten you. Am I making any sense to anybody? God said, look birds, you will fly. And then God put flight in the bird. That's why birds don't attend flight school. God says, fish, you will swim. That's your purpose. And then God put the swim in the fish. So fish never go to swimming schools. They swim in schools. <laughs> Am I right? God says, seed, you will bring forth trees. Now you'll never see a seed going to attend a seminar on trees. The tree is built in the seed. In other words, the ability, the potential of a thing is determined by its, this, its assignment. Once you discover your gift and your assignment, you've also discovered your ability. Number three, to have confidence in life and face the future, you must have knowledge of your resources. You must understand what you have in your hand. First, your resources include a lot of things like your brain. Use your brain. And then use your senses. Don't be a nonsense person. God give you wisdom, use it. That's a resource. And then use your body properly. Don't abuse your body and, and put junk in it. That's a resource God gave you to fulfill your purpose. And then he gave you the resource of family. You want to use the benefits of a family to help you get to your future. And then sometime God will give you a bigger family, like a church family. And then he'll give you some mentors. These are resources. People who he put in your life to encourage you, to teach you, to train you. This is resource. You learn to use them properly. Every week we come here, I am a resource person. That's what I am. And I, I want to tell you something about resource people too. Don't expect things that are not reasonable from them. There are certain things I cannot do for you. I cannot visit you every day. I cannot come to you every time you're hurting. That's not reasonable. There's too many people for me to do that to. So if you demand that from me and I don't show up and therefore you leave because you didn't see me, you're demanding something unreasonable from the resource person. I give you the most important thing every week, which is what? The word of God. And I may, I may fail. I may, I may go. I may die. But the word of God lasts forever. I will give you what you can take with you. And that's reasonable. Resources. Resources include also what's in your house. How do you use your tape player? What kind of junk you play on it? Or do you play stuff good on that resource to help you toward your dream? Time is a resource. How do you use your time to go to your future and to build yourself up to go toward your dream? That's a resource. You must know your resources. And then number four, you must know your source. Oh, hallelujah. If you're going to have confidence in life, you got to know where you came from. You came out of God. He is your source. And he promised to supply all that you will need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. This is your source. Friends, this is important. Because sometimes we depend on people to get ahead. Oh, hallelujah. I say, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. God is your source. Whatever is coming to you is coming to you from God. Everybody say, relax. It's on the way. I know some of the things that you and I are dreaming about is taking long. But believe me, if God promised it, it's coming from God. And the reason why God don't bring it from people who you want to come from, because he don't want them to get the credit. He is your source. And sometimes God will use the most unlikely people to bless you, because he wants you to take him as the credit. Can I hear an amen? amen. He is my source. Say it for yourself. Is you are my source, God. I depend on no one but God. And that's your confidence. Your confidence is this. If he said it, he will do it. And if he promised it, he will bring it to pass. Who will? He will bring it to pass. 
I like what the Bible says again. It says promotion doesn't come from the east, nor from the west, nor from your friend, nor your cousin, nor the boss who likes you. But promotion comes from above, it says. That means God will promote you in a way that he gets the credit. You ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. He is your source. And some of you are facing some conditions that are so impossible. You are afraid right now. You're saying, God, how am I going to get out of this? God has sent your senior pastor to tell you today, you coming out of this, and he's going to do it in a way that only he gets the credit. He is my source. I say, God is my source. You got to know that to have confidence. How do you move forward when you ain't got enough finances? You better depend on God. And the Bible says he knows where the secret riches of darkness lie. There's some stuff that's hidden away just for you. Praise God. And he will bring it to you at the right moment. And you're going to know it's God because there ain't no other way he could have gotten it. You got to give him praise. He is a faithful God. It's coming, girl. He's going to bless you, sir. He's your source. Number five, very important. You must have knowledge of your value. If you're going to have confidence in facing the future, you got to know that you are valuable and worthy of that future. This is very important. You got to know your self worth. Attitude comes from personal revelation. I cannot make you like yourself. What you need is a personal revelation about who you are. And automatically, your attitude changes toward you. Oh, I wish I had a couple more days to talk about this. I was born in the lowest part of this country called Baintow, in a street called South Street. Down there where the, the yard was dirt and the floor of the house was wood. Can any good thing come out of this place? I got a revelation about who I was. Let me tell you something. If you are.